Since the arrival of Roman Abramovich in 2003, Chelsea has managed to become one of the elite clubs in Europe in a short period of time. The Russian oligarch poured a lot of money into the team, making transfers of the best players on the planet. However, not all the players who came were able to unleash their full potential at Stamford Bridge. Some could not reveal their talent under pressure from the press and fans, others weren't able to gain the head coach's trust, and still others simply did not fit the game system. In this video, we will look at the players who were able to reach their potential only after leaving Chelsea. You are on the Foot History Channel. Enjoy the video! Before the move to Chelsea, Mohamed Salah managed to upset Chelsea in European competitions three times in Basel. First, the player scored against the future club in the semi-finals of the 2012-2013 Europa League. A few months later, he scored twice in matches against Jose Mourinho's team in the Champions League group stage. In the winter of 2014, when Juan Mata left Chelsea, the Blues quickly found a replacement for the Spaniard paying 16.5 million euros for Salah. Premier League is a fantastic league. This is my dream. I play in uh, Premier League, but now I play in uh, one of the big team in Premier League. It's fantastic. At first, Mohamed's prospects at Chelsea look very promising. The forward scored his debut goal for the team in that very thousandth game of Arsene Wenger as Arsenal's coach, where the Gunners lost with a score of 0-6. Salah appeared in the field in the 67th minute and scored the last goal of the match. In the April match against Stoke City, Salah entered the field for the first time from the first minutes of the match and was able to score a goal and make an assist. Unfortunately, this was the forward's last bright match at Chelsea. In the new 2014-2015 season, Mohamed lost the trust of Mourinho, who preferred to let Willian or Scherl on the right flank. Until January, the footballer spent only 30 minutes in the Premier League, after which he asked to be released on loan. Having been at the Fiorentina for six months, Salah proved that Chelsea did not let him out on the field in vain. In 16 matches, the player scored six goals and made three assists. After that, he left for Roma, which brought him out at the end of the 2015-2016 season. Mohamed, welcome to the club. How excited are you to have joined Roma? Thank you very much. Uh, for sure, I'm very happy to be here. In two years at Roma, Mohamed scored 34 goals and made 22 assists in 183 matches, thanks to which he returned to the English Premier League. This time, Salah ended up in Liverpool. The Reds were interested in Mohamed even before his move to Chelsea, but the transfer never took place. Under the leadership of Jurgen Klopp, the forward has grown to become a real superstar and turned into a real killer. In his debut season for Liverpool, Salah scored 43 goals across all tournaments, with 32 of them being scored in the Premier League. This is an absolute record for goals in a season to date. Salah, with 173 goals, ranks fifth in the table of the best scorers in Liverpool's history. Mourinho later explained why Salah didn't suit Chelsea at the time. People are trying to label me as the person who sold Salah. It's not true. I'm the coach who hired Mohamed when I was at Chelsea. We played at Basel in the Champions League. I fell in love with Salah's game and insisted on buying him. But we had great players in his position, Willian and Azar. Mohamed arrived in London and was completely lost in the new world. We wanted to quickly bring him into the team, but he wanted to play every minute and couldn't wait. He arrived in, in Chelsea coming from Basel, a lonely boy, a naive boy, completely out of, of context, physically fragile. Romelu Lukaku moved to Chelsea twice and both times ended in a real failure. He first appeared at Stamford Bridge in the summer of 2011, when he moved from Anderlecht for 15 million euros at the age of 18. In his debut season at Chelsea, Romelu received almost no playing time and a year later went on loan to West Brom where he scored 17 goals in the EPL in one season. As a result, Lukaku attracted the attention of Jose Mourinho, who became Chelsea coach in the summer of 2013. But an unrealized penalty in the post-match penalty shootout of the UEFA Super Cup against Bayern forced the coach to reconsider his plans for the Belgian. As a result, Romelu went on another loan to Everton. First of all, just talk us through last Monday, transfer deadline day. Uh, watching on the television, it all seems a bit hectic. How was it for you? Uh, yeah, I had a call on 7-8 from my agent that there was a possibility that I could leave and I was like, yeah, okay, it's fine. Because uh, at one point I knew that I had to play. 
In the Toffees, Lukaku demonstrated high performance, scoring 15 goals. Before the start of the 2014-15 season, Chelsea bought Diego Costa from Atletico Madrid, which finally buried the prospect of Lukaku at Stamford Bridge. As a result, the player was sold to Everton for €35,360,000. At Goodison Park, the forward continued to progress, as expected. By the end of the 2016-17 season, he realized that he had outgrown the level of Everton. Everything was leading up to the fact that Romelu would return to Chelsea. But at the last moment, Manchester United reached out to the player and paid £84,700,000 for the transfer. It seemed that Chelsea's doors had finally closed in front of Lukaku. But everything turned out not to be as simple. After poor seasons in Manchester, Lukaku moved to Inter, where he truly reinvented himself, scoring 64 goals in two seasons. Last summer, the player seriously interested Chelsea once again. The club was sure that Romelu was finally ready to become a superstar for the team. Chelsea paid 113 million euros for the forward and made him the most expensive footballer in history. Romelu, hey. great to see you. Good to see you too. Incredible to think it's almost 10 years to the day since we first sat down the last time around. I think the first question I asked them was, what does it feel like to be here? I'm going to ask you the same thing again. <laughs> How is it? Um, it feels good. It feels good. Like I said, I feel blessed. I feel blessed with the opportunity. I'm very grateful. Um, but yeah, I think eventually it was meant to happen. You know, I think as a, as a person, you have to dream and, um, you know, but you have to set yourself targets as well. But this decision was a real failure, despite an impressive start and three goals in the first three EPL matches. After a while, Lukaku began to not fit into the team's game at all. The forward was already disappointed in his return to Chelsea in the winter and asked to return to Inter. After finishing the season with eight goals in the EPL, Lukaku returned to Inter on loan. It cannot be ruled out that in a year we will see the third coming of Lukaku at Stamford Bridge. After all, Thomas Tuchel, with whom Romelu did not really get along, was recently dismissed from the post of head coach with Graham Potter coming in his place. The first rumors about De Bruyne's transfer to Chelsea began to appear in the summer of 2011. As a result, everything dragged on until winter. The Genk midfielder still managed to play two matches against the future club in the group stage of the Champions League, in one of which he made an assist. In January, the transfer still took place. Hi, my name is Kevin De Bruyne. Uh, I'm 21 years old. I just joined Chelsea for my former club Genk. But Kevin signed a contract and returned to finish the season back in Genk. In the summer of 2012, Chelsea felt that it was too early for Kevin to play in the English Premier League, so the player moved to Werder on loan. In the Bundesliga, De Bruyne had an impressive season, scoring 10 goals and making 9 assists. In 2013, I returned home to Chelsea. Jose Mourinho, who returned to Chelsea, saw De Bruyne as part of the starting lineup. The Belgian had an impressive pre-season and entered the field in the first round of the EPL from the first minutes against Hull City. In his official debut for the Blues, Kevin gave an assist and seemed to mark the beginning of a long career at Stamford Bridge. Kevin, how much did you enjoy your debut for Chelsea? Yeah, I think it was a good start, especially the first half. I think we, we, we began very sharp, a lot of pressing and scored uh, two nice goals. But yeah, um, the second half was a little bit worse. But yeah, it was a mature game of us and uh, we didn't concede the goal, so I think it's good. De Bruyne also started the second round match with Manchester United from the first minute, but then lost his place in the starting lineup. Mourinho used Kevin on the attacking front. Jose demanded to work more diligently in defense from the midfielders. Since Kevin did not quite fit these requirements, the coach preferred Willian, who fit better into the style of play. In the winter of 2014, Kevin wanted to leave and moved to Wolfsburg for just 20 million euros. Since then, the career of the football player has only been moving upwards. It took De Bruyne only a year and a half to prove that Chelsea were grossly mistaken about him. In Wolfsburg, Kevin played 73 matches, scored 20 goals, and made 37 assists. In the summer of 2015, De Bruyne returned to the English Premier League. For 76 million euros, he was bought by one of Chelsea's competitors, Manchester City. De Bruyne at that time became the most expensive transfer in the history of Manchester City, but in subsequent years fully justified all the investments. 
At the moment, Kevin has been in the team for eight seasons, and during this period has established himself as one of the best midfielders in the world. Kevin is the eighth best assistant in EPL history. He made 91 assists. In total, De Bruyne played 334 matches for Manchester City across all tournaments, scored 89 goals, made 138 assists. He became the champion of England four times, won the FA Cup and the Carabao Cup five times. The only major trophy that Kevin has not been able to conquer is the Champions League. Symbolically, in the final match of 2021, Manchester City lost to Chelsea and failed to win the coveted trophy. In the winter of 2015, when Salah went to Fiorentina, the Blues needed to replace the Egyptian, and Fiorentina simplified the deal by offering Cuadrado to the London club. The Colombian stayed in the Italian team after a successful performance at the World Cup in Brazil. Cuadrado had one of the best dribbles in the Serie A, so Chelsea did not regret paying 31 million euros for him. Only time has shown that this transfer has become one of the most questionable in the history of Chelsea. Acting as a winger, the footballer was not noticeable on the field, and due to his weak physical stature, was easy prey for the defenders of the Premier League. After spending only six months in the team, Juan made one assist in the championship, after which he moved to Juventus. At first, the transfer took place on loan, but after a while, Juventus bought the Colombian out for 20 million euros. After moving to Bianconeri, Connery, Cuadrado turned into a completely different football player. Before arriving at Juventus, Juan was a physically weak and fragile player, but his main advantage was his fast legs, thanks to which the midfielder demonstrated spectacular dribbling. Under the guidance of Massimiliano Allegri, Cuadrado gained decent muscle mass and became the complete opposite of the previous version of himself. Playing at the wingback position, he noticeably increased in defense and was still able to sharpen attacks. Juan has been covering Juventus's right flank for seven years and has managed to win five Scudettos with the club. Perhaps if Cuadrado had stayed at Chelsea longer and waited for Antonio Conte's appointment in 2016, his future could have turned out differently but there's no guarantee that the Italian would have seen a wingback in Juan. 19-year-old Jamal Musiala took his first professional steps in football at the German club Lanerz, where in two years he managed to make a good impression and interest the scouts of Southampton. In 2010, the midfielder moved to Wembley and later received English citizenship. Jamal stayed in Southampton for only six months, after which he left for Chelsea. I think they watched me at one of the games we had at Southampton and they offered me a trial at Chelsea and I yeah. thought, why, why wouldn't I of course, go, it's Chelsea. go to Chelsea? Yeah. Yeah. And Musiala spent eight years at the academy and showed great potential, but by 2019, the player finally realized that he had no future at Stamford Bridge. By that time, in the 16 years that Abramovich was involved with the team, only one pupil, John Terry, managed to really play. He made his debut for Chelsea long before the arrival of Abramovich. Musiala did not see any prospects and decided to return to Germany by accepting an offer from Bayern. Ultimately, this decision became the best in his career. Yeah, I think Bayern had my Eltern and my agent contacted, and then they told me gesagt and it was a big shock for me and my family. So at first, Jamal played for the Bayern youth team, but after a COVID pause in 2020, he made his way to the main team and even managed to win the Champions League. Despite the fact that Musiala made his debut for Bayern at the age of 17, he looked quite mature and was not much inferior to his competitors in terms of position on the field. Step by step, Jamal was getting better and better. This provoked a real competition between the national teams of England and Germany. Since Musiala did not have the time to make his debut for any of the national teams at the adult level due to having a dual citizenship, he had the opportunity to decide for himself who to play for. In the end, he chose Germany. To date, Jamal has played 20 matches and scored one goal. If we talk about the current Bundesliga season, Musiala's performance has skyrocketed. Last season, he scored five goals and made five assists in 30 matches. And in the current season, by February, he had already scored nine goals and made six assists. Many Chelsea fans still have one question. What would have happened if Musiala had stayed in the team in the summer of 2019?
because at that moment, Frank Lampard had become the head coach who, due to a transfer ban, successfully integrated several young players into the starting lineup. Tammy Abraham played for the Chelsea Academy for seven years and established himself as a natural scorer. In the 2015-16 season, the forward made his debut for Chelsea in the EPL. He was only 18 years old. Having spent a total of 53 minutes in the match with Liverpool and the champion Leicester in the summer of 2016, the player was loaned to Bristol City. Tammy, welcome to Bristol City on the eve of the season. Um, how excited are you about this low move? Um, obviously, it's an exciting move. Such a team as Bristol City with the players, obviously the staff, the coaches, all that I've met. It's an exciting move for me and obviously the players I just want to do well here. Abraham scored 23 goals and made four assists, then attracted the attention of Swansea. Unfortunately, Abraham couldn't adapt and only scored five goals. But the next loan to Aston Villa helped the forward to demonstrate his scoring skills again. Abraham's 26 goals in the championship helped Aston Villa return to the Premier League three years after relegation. Since Chelsea had a transfer ban in the summer of 2019, Frank Lampard, who headed the team, introduced young people into the starting lineup. One of the players who got a chance was Abraham himself. Tammy had had an impressive season, scoring 15 goals in the EPL. But as soon as the transfer ban was lifted from Chelsea, the team went out and spent €247,200,000 on the transfer market. Due to new players, the progress of some young talent stopped. Despite 15 goals in the Premier League, in his debut full-on season for the club, Abraham was put on the bench and Werner and Havertz took his place more often. With the arrival of Thomas Tuchel, the situation for Tammy became even worse. The footballer went into deep reserve after which he left the team in the summer, winning the Champions League and the UEFA Super Cup. Abraham could have moved to Arsenal, but the head coach of Roma, Jose Mourinho, convinced him with a good project for the coming seasons, and Abraham signed a contract with Roma. At Chelsea, I think you were uh, still in the academy when Jose Mourinho was there for his second spell. Now you're working with him here at Roma. Um, have you had a chance to speak to him here already? And, and what will it be? How excited are you for the prospect of working with him? He's a big character, Miranda Building, and you know he's he's won major trophies. He's had the experience of working with the best players in the world. So for me to work under him, you know, I'm very happy. I'm very can't wait to get started. Abraham's first season turned out to be more than successful. He scored 27 goals across all competitions and broke Roma's club record for the number of goals in his debut season. Abraham's goals helped Roma win the Conference League, which became the team's first trophy since 2008. Already at the end of the season, rumors began to appear about Abraham's possible return to the English Premier League, but the footballer made it clear that he did not want to leave Italy yet. By the way, Abraham himself does not regret leaving Chelsea at all. It was the best choice in my life. When there were rumors about Lukaku, it was a signal for me. I wanted to leave Chelsea and prove that they were wrong about me. Fikayo Tomori made his debut for Chelsea in the same period as Abraham. Only if Abraham had previously played on loan at Aston Villa, Tomori, along with Mount, played for Derby County under Lampard. After returning to Chelsea, Fikayo became the main defender for a while, thanks to the trust from Lampard. Individually, Tomori showed a pretty good game. But since the team's defense was weak overall, Chelsea gave up a lot of goals. Tomori's first season at Stamford Bridge turned out to be very positive. Despite the constant rotation with Kurt Zuma and Antonio Rudiger, Fikayo Tomori played 15 matches and scored a great goal against Wolverhampton. But as in the case of Abraham, everything changed in the summer of 2020, when Chelsea spent a lot of money in the transfer market. After the arrival of the experienced Thiago Silva, Tomori spent only 44 minutes on the field in the new season, after which he went on loan to Milan in the winter. Yeah, I mean, when I first got called, I was a bit, um, I wouldn't say confused, but I was surprised. Um, and then uh, and I spoke to, to, to Paolo Maldini and, you know, the best defender that, that, that ever played football um, was, was talking to me and asking me to come. So from there, uh, I knew that this was where I wanted to be and this is where I wanted to come and play football and to, to learn from him as well. And um, I'm, just, I'm just very happy to be here now. In six months, he made a great impression and Rossoneri eventually bought Tomori for €28,800,000. In the 2021-2022 season, 
Vicayo became one of the key players in the team's defense, and he helped the Italians in 18 matches of Serie A, not to concede a single goal. Largely thanks to Tamori's confident defense, Milan became the Serie A champion for the first time in 11 years. Tarek Lamptey played at the Chelsea Academy for six years and made his debut for the adult team in the 2019-2020 season under the guidance of Frank Lampard. The footballer played two matches in the FA Cup and one match in the Premier League where Chelsea beat Arsenal with a score of 1-2. Only by that time, Lamptey realized that he had almost no chance of winning the competition from Rhys James and Aspilicueta. Therefore, in January 2020, six months before the expiration of the contract, he moved to Brighton for €1,200,000. You have to be ready and be prepared for whatever comes at you. And I was just, hopefully, I was just grateful that the gaffer gave me the chance to play and the teams helped me. But yeah, I was, I was happy with the amount of games that I got and hopefully I can just kick on. Tarek quickly joined the team of Graham Potter and stood out brightly on the field thanks to his explosive speed and uncompromising defensive play. Speaking of statistics, Lamptey cannot be called a productive defender because in 57 matches with Brighton, he scored only one goal and made six assists. Nevertheless, the main benefit of Tariq is that the player is able to set the pace and sharpen attacks and in addition act competently without the ball. Due to the great competition on the right flank of the defence in the England national team, the defender recently changed his citizenship and will now be playing for the Ghana national team. This is the country where his parents were born. Thanks to this, Tariq played at the World Cup facing Portugal's and South Korea national teams. Last winter, rumours were actively circulating in the press that Arsenal and Tottenham were interested in the player, but at that moment the transfer never took place. It cannot be ruled out that the future of Lamptey's transfer to the top EPL club will still take place, and then Chelsea will have another reason to be sad about the lost talent. Declan Rice was at the Chelsea Academy until he was 16 and literally lived the dream of making his debut for the main team one day. But the desire of the football player was not destined to come true, because one day the Chelsea management informed the player's father that the club can no longer leave Rice at the academy. That night, not only Rice was crying, but also his best friend Mason Mount. I couldn't believe this news. My mum and Declan's mum were crying together on the phone. That day, the player was comforted by John Terry. He called the young footballer and urged him not to stop and fight to the end to return to the top level. Rice followed this advice and soon after found himself at West Ham United, where he gradually, step by step, grew into a major player. If initially he played as a central defender, then at West Ham, he was reclassified as a defensive midfielder. In this role, Declan has established himself as one of the best in Europe. Now, 23-year-old Rice is the captain of his club and the main player of the national team of England, who has experience of playing in the final of the European Championship, UEFA Euro Final. The grandees of the English Premier League have been trying to acquire Rice for several seasons, but the demand of 100 million euros has been scaring off applicants so far. Chelsea is among them, of course. The Blues realize their mistake and are ready to pay a large sum of money. Rice's contract with West Ham expires in the summer of 2024. He is not at all eager to extend it, because he understands that he has grown to the level of a top club. But at the first opportunity, not only Chelsea will want to sign Rice, for example, Manchester United is also interested in the midfielder, and who knows, if choosing between the two teams, he would prefer to return to Stamford Bridge. Nemanja Matic first came to Chelsea in 2009, when they acquired him for €1,750,000 from the Slovak club Košice. In his debut season at Chelsea, Nemanja mainly played for the youth team, but still took the field twice in the English Premier League, thanks to which he received a championship medal in May 2010. The player spent the next season on loan for the Dutch club of Vitesse, after returning, from which he realized his hopeless situation at Chelsea and due to the huge competition, moved for 5 million euros to Benfica. The footballer finally began to progress and in a short time, he was noticed by top clubs. In the 2011-2012 season, Nemanja played against his former team in the quarter-finals of the Champions League and a year later in the Europa League final. Chelsea turned out to be stronger in all the matches, which won both trophies. In the winter of 2014, the Blues needed to transfer a new midfielder, 
Matic attracted the attention of head coach Jose Mourinho, and Nemanja returned to Stamford Bridge for 25 million euros. Welcome back to Chelsea. Does it feel strange or good or what? I feel very good, thank you. I think that I'm, I'm better than, than uh, of course, than last time when I was here because I'm older, three and a half years, and that's why. In the 2014-15 season, he became a key player of the team that became the Premier League champion and won the Carabao Cup. After Mourinho's dismissal, Antonio Conte came to Chelsea, under whose leadership Matic won the EPL again in the 2016-17 season. Unfortunately after that, Matic held a grudge against Chelsea bosses for their unwillingness to raise the player's salary. All sides came to the conclusion that the best solution would be to transfer Nemanja for €44,700,000 to Manchester United, where the midfielder reunited with Mourinho. Matic has not won a single trophy at the Red Devils in five years and left the club as a free agent last summer. But in this case, Chelsea at least recouped the money they laid out for Matic in 2014. Torgan Hazard joined Chelsea with his brother Edin in the summer of 2013. Edin moved from Lille and Torgan from Lens. A month later, Hazard Jr. went on loan to the Belgian club Zulti Waregem. The footballer made a pretty good impression at this club, and a year later, he left for Borussia Gladbach for a year. Thanks to one goal and seven assists in the season in the Bundesliga, in 2015, the German club made a transfer of Torgan paying Chelsea 8 million euros. Over the next four seasons, Hazard constantly progressed. He scored 30 goals and made 28 assists in the Bundesliga. During this period, Torgan was regularly called up to the Belgian national team and as a result, moved to Borussia Dortmund. Hazard is now 29 years old. He has played 122 matches, scored 18 goals and made 21 assists for Borussia Dortmund and recently moved on loan to PSV. In recent years, Torgan's performance indicators have become lower, but individually, he is more consistent than his older brother Eden Hazard. Nathan Ake ended up at the Chelsea Academy in 2011 when he moved from Feyenoord. At first, he played for the youth team, but in the 2012-13 season, he made his debut in the English Premier League under the guidance of Rafael Benitez. Since then, the player had played only a few matches in three years and was not considered an important figure at all. And it all went on like that until Nathan began to wander around the loans. From 2015 to 17, he played for clubs such as Reading, Watford, Bournemouth. Nathan Ake impressed Chelsea coach Antonio Conte in the first half of the 2016-17 season. As a result, the Italian decided to withdraw the player from the loan. For the remaining six months, Ake played only two matches in the EPL, but still received his gold medal at the end of May. In the summer of 2017, Ake's story with Chelsea finally came to an end. The defender was sold back to Bournemouth, where he began to progress faster and was regularly called up to the Dutch national team. When Bournemouth flew to the championship at the end of the 2019-20 season, Nathan was sold to Manchester City for €45,300,000 and became a whole nother player who made Chelsea regret the decision to part with him. The versatility of a football player capable of closing any position in defence and playing in the support zone was very much liked by head coach Pep Guardiola. That's why the citizens decided to pay such money. In his first two years at Manchester City as a rotation player, Ake won the English Premier League twice. In addition, Ake could have won the Champions League, but ironically, Chelsea turned out to be stronger in the decisive match of 2020. This summer, the Blues were interested in returning their student, but the transfer fell through at the last minute as the new owners refused to pay the required 55 million euros. A disastrous stage at Chelsea does not always indicate that a player cannot perform at a high level. Players like Salah and De Bruyne have shown how important the game system can be. In individual cases, Chelsea bought newcomers only for the future, without thinking about whether they conform to the philosophy of the coach. The new owners apparently continue to adhere to this trend if we take into account the signing of Carney Chukameka and Cesare Casade. These transfers were hardly coordinated with Tuchel, who was fired a month after the start of the new season. What do you think? Which of the current Chelsea players would definitely become a superstar if they moved to another team? Let us know in the comments. I recommend watching my video about the most interesting moments of revenge in football. See you later.